Hey everybody, Grandmaster Ben Feingold here with another recap, this time from round six. We'll look at the game between the two R's, Timur Rajabov versus Richard Report. Let's get right to the game. They played another Sicilian, that's what Report's doing this tournament. He's playing E6, Knight C6, and A6. <clears throat> the other players, for the most part, are playing Berlin's as black, but Report's playing the Sicilian. White played Knight takes and Queen D3, a very unusual line, but they followed a game. Both of them were really well prepared for this move. Um, not sure how black was well prepared, but what do I know? D5, queen g3, stopping the bishop from moving off of f8. Put it in h, h5, h4, h5, h4. That's how we play chess nowadays. We, we're, we're just put, moving our h pawns. That's how it's done now. Okay, d4 attacking the knight. The knight retreats, always retreat. Knight f6. The players were blitzing these moves out, and we saw there was a game in this line recently. So the players were following that game. Bishop d3, bishop b4 check, king f1. This is still the game they're following. And in this position, uh, uh, Rajabov played the first novelty of the game. He played the move bishop g6 check. Uh, I think white either played c3 or knight d2 in the other game. After bishop g6 check, report moved pretty quickly, considering seems unlikely he knew this move. And he played king to d7, and Rajabov must not have been expecting that. Or maybe just Rajabov was out of his prep. I don't know. He thought forever in this position. This is a very unusual position. It looks like two kids are playing who just learned the rules. They're playing h4, h5. White never develops his queen side. Both sides move their queen out, and both sides move their king out. That's modern chess for you. Now, this king looks bad on d7, but actually it's quite safe. And white has two... White. Black has two center pawns to zero. So I think black is doing fine in this position. The engine wants to play c3 right away, after long thought, very long thought, Rajabov played bishop g5, a move the engine doesn't like. Rook f8, the rook wants to go to f8 anyway. And now the knight can come to g4. Notice the rook, the rook is defended by the bishop. Always defend bishop f8. Knight g4 is coming, f2 is weak. The king and the queen are misplaced. c3 is the best move, attacking the bishop. Bishop to d6. White decided to try to win a pawn. Pawn takes pawn. After queen takes pawn, white went into a big think here. In this position, it would have been safer for white to trade queens and sacrifice and white black sacrifices a pawn. Rook b8 threatening the pawn. Rook d4 threatening this pawn. And if you defend, then knight g4 threatening everything. And this is excellent for black. Black has a big advantage. So that's why Rajabov didn't go into this ending. Instead, he took right away. After queen takes, he really has to deal with knight g4. Knight g4 is a very serious threat now. Also, queen takes b2 is not bad. Rajabov found the only move to keep equality. Queen c3, good move. Queen d1 check, traded queens. Remember, white can't castle. White's moved his king twice. Rook b8 threatening the pawn. He ignored the threat. You can't play b3 because bishop e5 is trapping the rook. So he played knight to d2, an excellent pawn sacrifice. Rook takes knight c4. And this leads to a long forcing line, which should end in a draw. Bishop b4 check, king f1. The rook is trapped on b2. Amazing. Notice how the bishops take away the squares for the rook. Knight g4 with crushing threats on f2. Now in this position, the game could end in a draw with knight takes b2, rook f2 check, rook takes b2, threatening bishop c5, rook c1, stopping bishop c5, king d6, threatening bishop c5, and then we can check and we can repeat. And the engine says this is a good repetition and should be a draw. Instead, uh, Rajabov never played f3, which also should lead to a draw. Rook f2 check, and this is all forced. Bishop c5, 
F takes G4, Rook F4 discovered check. You have to go to F4. If you go somewhere else, like, I don't know, F5, F6, F7, then the bishop can go to E3 or the knight can go to E3. We're blocking the bishop. Now we're going to take this knight next move, which is what would have happened after king h2. Instead, he played knight e3. And now after you take king h2, we, ha we have a little skewer here. He took on g4. And even though black is two pawns up in this forced variation of this endgame, it's still equal. White has just enough compensation for two pawns. The bishop is terrible on c8. White has a big attack here, bishop b6 check. Opposite color bishops, all these weak isolated pawns. It's just enough to equalize for white. <clears throat> bishop b7, bishop c5. And in this position, the engine wasn't a big fan of the bishop d6 to e5 maneuver, but it worked to a charm. In this position, black should play rook f8. The bishop on e5 is excellent for controlling this diagonal, b8, c7, d6. White wants to play rook f1, rook f7. And after rook f7, white's winning. So what black needs to do is play rook f8, rook f5, and black still has the advantage with his two extra pawns. Instead, he blundered with rook g4, probably thinking white would defend his h-pawn, missing rook f1, and now rook f7, if white can play it, is winning. Black's only chance, which he missed, was c5, with the idea of rook f7, then I can play rook takes g2 check, I've unleashed this, king h3, rook e2, and after bishop d6, white has excellent winning chances, even though white's down three pawns. Instead, black missed his chance, played rook takes h4 check, and now after king g1, white is actually winning, although Rajabov didn't realize it. Rajabov's like, I'm down three pawns, I'm choking on my own rage. And after rook e4, Rajabov, with little time on his clock, was happy to take a draw since he's down three pawns. He could have just coolly retreated with bishop h2, always retreat, with unstoppable rook f7. Amazingly, white is winning in this position, even though white's down three pawns. When the game ended, report showed Rajabov bishop h2 and you're winning. And Rajabov's like, what? Now, not only does rook f7 threaten the bishop and win the bishop, it also threatens rook c7 check. Man, the truth hurts. If we play e5, for example, to block the bishop, your bishop is completely trapped and is going to be captured with a winning endgame for white. There's just no defense here. No matter what you do, rook f7 is winning. Instead, Rajabov was happy to take the draw down three pawns, played rook f7 in mild time trouble, Rook e5, rook b7. White has a perpetual on the seventh rank, but no more. Rook b7 forces the perpetual. We have to play rook check, rook check, rook check. The players are so good, they realized that that was going to happen now, and they agreed to a draw. Black's up three pawns. White can't really play for a win, but white could have played for a win with the bishops on the board since black's bishop on b7 was going to be captured. So a lucky escape from report and a semi-lucky escape for Rajabov, who had a worse position if black had played rook f8 instead of rook g4. After playing a brilliant game, Report made two mistakes in a row, got a losing position, but drew quickly afterwards, Rajabov not realizing what happened. Rajabov sacrificing all his pawns for perpetual, didn't realize he had more. Well, I hope you enjoyed this recap here on YouTube. You can watch the analysis live at twitch.tv slash GM Benjamin Feingold. And I'll see you guys next time with more recaps. Tomorrow's a rest day. Bye.